On November 16th, uh, 2016, I had an encounter with the presence of the living God. I didn't just have uh, an emotional experience, you know, that lasted a moment or something that I thought was God, but was just myself, my imagination. No, I encountered the presence of the living God and uh, it changed my life forever. I was a junior in high school and uh, I, was, I was on this fall retreat. I was on a retreat uh, with my parish and my friend decided to introduce me to his brother who happened to be a priest. And we were talking for a while, you know, and I had been living a life uh, quite far away from Christ. I had been living a life uh, very different than the life I'd been wanting to live. And the Holy Spirit came upon me in that moment and convicted me and brought me uh, into the sacrament of confession. And, uh, you know, I've been to confession many times in my life, but I had never had a confession that lasted an hour and a half. And that's what happened that night. I went in and at first I did, you know, just a very slapdash confession. Oh, here are my sins, you know, I'm sorry. And it was so interesting. The priest, after he, he listened to me, he just paused for a moment and he said, do you know that God loves you even when you sin? And I said, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, I know God loves me. He said, no, do you know that the Lord loves you? And he said, I'd like to pray over you. Now at this point, you know, I had heard uh, many different things about Catholic charismatics. And uh, I had a very, very different opinion than I have now. But I, I said, okay, sure, that's fine. So I let him pray over me. And what happened that day is I came to know that I was a beloved son of the Father. I came to know that those parts of me that I was trying to hide from God for so long, those parts of me that I thought were unlovable, those were the parts he was loving the most because those were the parts of me that needed the most love. So that day I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit and I started to pursue a relationship with God. I started to pursue God as the love of my life. And little by little, there are many falls along the way, um, but I started to discern that God was calling me to be a priest. I started to discern uh, that I was called to give my life to serve the world that everyone, so that everyone I encounter may come to know that they are beloved sons and daughters of the Father. So I, you know, I graduated from high school and I went to Duquesne University, right? Which is, I, I heard was the, the home of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, right? Where the Duquesne weekend happened. We all hear about the Duquesne weekend. But when I arrived at the university, um, I didn't find any charismatic renewal. I didn't find the fire of the Holy Spirit there. And what I found is sometimes I'd go to mass and it would be just me and the priest in the morning or me and maybe a couple other people. But one day I remember I was going to mass and you know, just praying, just being there and asking the Lord, you know, Lord, if there's any opportunity uh, for me to be able to minister to your people, uh, make it known to me. And one day I, as I was coming out of mass this 30 some year old Nigerian fellow comes up to me and looks at me and goes, hey, you. I said, yeah. He goes, you, you're a member of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. And uh, I remember thinking like, wow, is this guy stalking me or something? Like I said, yeah, I, I am. And he says, good. You will found a group of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal here on campus with me. We will bring it back to the university together. And uh, I said, yeah, well, uh, let me, you know, let me go pray about it. Let me think about it. And he said, why? Why do you have to pray about it? God has told me that you're the one who's going to help me. And I said, okay, that's great. But, you know, I need to consider it for myself for a while. Of course, very quickly, the Lord convicted my heart that this is why he sent me to the university uh, to help bring back the fire of the Holy Spirit that was once 
there on that campus setting the students who went on the Duquesne weekend aflame with the fire of God's love. This man I met is named Peter Emanuel, and he ended up being the co-founder along with me of Opus Novum Catholic Charismatic Renewal at Duquesne University. Now, when I had met Peter, I, all I knew about him is that he was a, a grad student um, studying education. You know, he was getting his master's in education. But one day he said, yeah, my, you know, my bishop sent me here. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, I just finished you know, 10 years of seminary. And before I get ordained, my bishop wants me to get my master's in education. I said, wow, okay. You know? And I said, so Peter, what's, what's the deal here? You know, why, you know, why did you pick me? Why do you know that you know, I'm supposed to help you uh, start this, this group on campus? And I remember he looked at me so seriously and he said, I've been at this university for two years and I have been longing to bring the renewal here. But the Lord told me that I would need someone to start this group with, that I would need someone to help me found the community here. And he said, the day I saw you, the Lord spoke to me and he said, see this man, this is the one, he will help you. And so I said, well, you know, we'll see what happens, but you know, we can, maybe we can pray with some students, but who knows, we'll, we'll, you know, I'll, I'll go with you and I'll see, I'll see where the Lord takes this, right? So we went and we got approval from the, the campus chaplain to meet in a little upper room chapel uh, and to pray. And we gathered one night uh, in that fall semester of, of 2018 with uh, four other students. There were just six of us total. And we just started to pray. Students who had never heard anything about charismatic prayer before, of course. And, uh, you know, it was very foreign to them. So we, you know, we started to pray with them. We started uh, to teach them about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, about opening yourself to receive the love of God, to minister to others. And we found that little by little, there was this fire not just consuming us, but also the students we were praying with. We started to see students who uh, hadn't been going to mass, had maybe gone to mass once a month or so, started going to daily mass with us. Students started walking uh, to their classes on campus, praying a decade of the rosary as they were going on. We would gather at night, you know, people would just send a text, hey, I really need prayer. We'd all come to the chapel and pray over them at night. And we saw little by little, this community of love was being formed. So, you know, we were seeing that God was working, something was happening. And more and more students were starting to come and, and to, to be interested in what we were doing. But really we were functioning without university approval. Um, so we applied for a constitution to get approved by the university. And what happened next was a year of trial. We kept being denied for an entire year to be on campus. And uh, we were so discouraged. I was so discouraged. Peter was always, he said, no, this is God's will. This is gonna happen, you know, Peter Emmanuel. But Peter Mollenpoly was, was not, as, uh, not as convinced. You know, I had, I had seen that the gender forum was uh, approved in two weeks, you know, to talk about transgender rights and, and all kinds of things like this. But a, a prayer group at a Catholic university had not been approved for about a year. So one day I was so discouraged, I, I went to the chapel late at night and I laid prostrate in front of the Lord, in front of the tabernacle there. And I just said, Lord, you know, I really thought that you wanted me to do this. I really thought that this was your will for me to, to help found this group, uh, to help bring the renewal back to Duquesne University after 50, 50 plus years. But we, were, we are receiving so much opposition, you know. Why is this? What, you know, what do you want here? And I'll never forget very clearly the Lord spoke these words to me. He said, Peter, this is my new work and I will not abandon it. This is my new work and I will not abandon it. 
And instantly, I knew that that was the name of the group, the new work. And so opus novum in Latin means the new work. And we realize that the Lord is constantly doing something new, not just all around us, but within our hearts, within our souls, in the depths of our very being. And this was the message we came to preach at the campus every day, that the Lord's new work is happening. And with or without us, he's going to do it. But it's a gift for us to be a part of it. So the very next year, we finally received approval from the university. Um, they approved our, I think, fourth or fifth draft of our constitution. We were recognized as a student organization. And I realized, though, that this wasn't just, you know, a club or a, or a student organization at a university. This was supposed to be a community of charity. You see, as, as Catholic charismatics, we, we get this uh, bad rap sometimes. You know, I'm sure you've all experienced it. But sometimes it comes from something we do on our parts, which is seeking the gifts rather than seeking the Lord. Seeking an emotion over seeking to be with the living God. And I found that at the university, our focus simply became love. And what does Paul tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13? You may have the tongues of angels, but without love, they are but a clanging cymbal and a resounding gong. So we started to just love each other, to love the Lord. And little by little, we saw that students were being set on fire to the point where one night, uh, commonly known as Opus Novum Roids Night, uh, I don't know why it's called that, but uh, that's what it's called today. Um, we started to go to prayer at 9 p.m. and we prayed till I think about 4 a.m. Yeah, 4 a.m. in the morning. And there were times when students would go to pray at maybe nine or 10 and they'd be done around 6 a.m. praying because God would come and just be with us. And we'd sing praise, we'd praise his holy name and we'd pray for each other, knowing that we are the body of Christ, knowing that it is our duty to edify each other. My friends, the reason why I'm here to talk to you today is so that I can just express my gratitude to the Lord in the fact that the renewal is back at Duquesne University. The renewal has found its home there and it is there to stay. God is raising the dead to life. He is bringing sinners back to his heart. He is showing us that we are his beloved sons, that we are his beloved daughters. You know, the future of the church, many have expressed so much concern over it, you know. And it is true. There is a time of persecution coming for us. We're already experiencing it today. We know the trials that Christians all around the world are undergoing. But what is so relevant, uh, what is so present to us more than anything is the love of God and how he is offering this love in a new way every single day. He is doing a new work in us every moment of every day. We just have to say yes. We just have to allow him to work in us. We have to allow him to work through us. And in that we will see many souls, many souls brought to Christ. You know, in reflecting on the original service team of Opus Novum. Peter Emmanuel went on to the Diocese of the Caribbean. He's ordained a deacon now. Uh, I entered the seminary two years later, along with uh, one of the other core team members decided to enter the same year. We entered the seminary together. We, had a we have a brother who's now entering the Carthusians, uh, becoming a Carthusian monk in England, and a sister who is discerning entering the TOR sisters. So the Lord is building up his church. This is just the beginning of what the Lord is doing. There is a battle coming, of course. We have to 
fight the enemy every day. And it is the goal of the devil, obviously, to take our gaze away from the Lord. But it is so clear that God is raising up an army and he's calling you to be a part of it. He's calling me to be a part of it. And he's calling us simply to do that by love, by focusing on loving him with our whole hearts, mind, soul, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. If we do this, all the gifts will come. The gifts will be made very present to us. We just need to be ready to receive when he comes knocking. My friends, thank you so much for coming and listening today. I pray that we may all continue to give ourselves more fully to our Lord each and every moment of every day that we may remember that this is his new work and he will not abandon it. Thank you and God bless you.